Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly for August 14th, 2023. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Liz, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. Uh, this meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafruit.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive those notifications, we ask us to add you to the CircuitPython Nisa, CircuitPython Nisa's Discord role. There is a notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 45-60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pins messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. The meeting is held in five parts. The first is community news. This will look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items from our Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. Second part is State of CircuitPython, Libraries, and Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by numbers separate from our status updates. The third part is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Fourth part is static, Status Updates. Status Updates is an opportunity to report on what we've been up to. Take a couple minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week. The fifth part is In the Weeds. In the Weeds is an opportunity for more long-form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. With that, we'll get started with community news. And I think the biggest news is CircuitPython Day 2023 is nearly here on August 18th. That is this Friday. Uh, the day highlights all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware. And there is a big list of events. It's going to be going from 10 a.m. till probably 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, there's going to be special streams, special panels. Uh, show and tell will be happening at 7.30 p.m. that night, followed by Ask an Engineer. Uh, and programming note that if you normally tune into 3D Hangouts or John Park's workshop, those are also happening on Friday as well. There'll be a special stream from Maker Melissa, a special CircuitPython Day game stream with Foamy Guy. It's going to be action-packed. So stay tuned to the Adafruit blog and Adafruit social media for links, including YouTube. Interaction with shows in progress will be held on the Adafruit Discord server where this meeting is taking place right now. And if you're working with CircuitPython, tag your projects with hashtag CircuitPythonDay2023 on social media and Adafruit will look to highlight them. Uh, next, uh, Nicholas Toller V and Fabio Pliger give an update on PyScript. One of the most exciting initiatives in the Python space these days is PyScript, which enables Python running natively in a browser with consistent Consistent support from the folks at Anaconda, this project has been making solid strides since its initial release. On the latest episode of Talk Python, host Michael Kennedy catches up with Fabio Pleger and Nicholas Tolervi to see where they are with the PyScript progress. And then Project of the Week was the ADA. The AI Display Assistant is a beginner-friendly project for using ChatGPT on an ESP32. This project uses ChatGPT and an Adafruit MagTag, an ESP32 with an e-ink display, to display interesting facts and inspirational quotes. You can adjust the refresh frequency to whatever frequency you want or need, and this was seen on Hackster.io. This and more is available in our weekly Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which goes out via email on Monday mornings. That was this morning. Uh, visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter. Thanks to Anne for putting the newsletter together. 
If you have any Python on hardware projects to share or find content you'd like to see included, please consider contributing to the newsletter. You can open a PR on GitHub, uh, tag and engineer on Twitter with hashtag CircuitPython or email cpnews at adafruit.com with a link. And that is the community news. Next up is State of CircuitPython, Libraries, and Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall, then separately discuss the core, libraries, and Blinka. So first up, overall, there were 17 pull requests merged by 16 authors. Uh, there were eight reviewers and seven closed issues by six people, 10 opened by 10 people. And now we will go to Dan for the core. Okay, thanks. Okay, in the last week or so, we had eight pull requests merged from nine authors. John A. Zoidberg is a new name, maybe. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, three reviewers. There are now 24 open pull requests. Some of them are really old and some of them are drafts that are blocked on other things, but we try to keep it under 25, 25 or under. There were five closed issues by four people and four open by four people. So we're sort of almost even. There are now 683 open issues. Um, we've got six active milestones, 8.2.x uh, has zero open issues. 9.0.0 has 48 open issues. A lot of those are just being deferred until uh, there are changes that we made in 9.0.0 as we need to. Um, 22 open issues labeled as libraries, 593 open as long term, 15 labeled as support. We're not sure if they're actually bugs. Uh, eight issues are dependent on third party things, so we're blocked on those, and two issues need to be triaged. They haven't yet been install, uh, assigned a milestone. So that's it for the core. Thank you, Dan. Uh, next, we'll go to Katni for the libraries. Thanks, Liz. So this section applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, as well as all of our uh, CircuitPython libraries in the community bundle. Uh, so that we had across all those repositories, nine pull requests merged from eight different authors, um, a few of the new names mentioned earlier, um, and uh, six reviewers. Um, the oldest one that was, or there were two older ones at 293 days and 235 days that were closed, which were great. Um, the rest were much younger, and it leaves us with 47 open pull requests, which is also down at least um, eight from the last time that I recall it being a little bit higher, so that's excellent to see. And uh, we had two issues closed by two people and four open by four people, leaving us with 631 open issues. 19 of those are labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including a list of open pull requests and a list of the open issues. If you're interested in reviewing, check out the open issues, leave a comment, let us know, and once you're comfortable with that, um, we can talk about leveling you up to the review team. If you're interested in contributing code or documentation, check out the open issues, see if anything interests you, leave a comment, and let us know you're working on it. If you're new to contributing to open source, we do have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. Um, so don't let the process intimidate you. We want to make sure that you can contribute in a way that works for you. We're always available on Discord as well to help. In terms of library PyPI weekly download stats, we had um, over 312 libraries, 138,266 PyPI downloads, and the top 10 are listed in the notes if you're interested. We had one new library in the last week, USB host descriptors and a couple of updated libraries that I will not read off, but they are in the notes. That's what I have. Excellent. Thanks, Katni. Uh, next, we'll hear from Melissa about Blinka. Hello. Let's place here. OK. Uh, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for um, MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. Uh, this week we had no pull requests merged. There are currently five open pull requests amongst the repositories. 
There were zero closed issues and two opened by two people. There are currently 102 open issues amongst all the repositories, and there was 11,694 PyPI downloads in the last week, 10,248 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 119 boards. And that's it. Thank you, Melissa. And that is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Next up is Huggerports. Huggerports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or are missing the meeting, I'll read your notes when I get to them in the list. Uh, so I will start. Uh, I would like to give a hug report to Carter for many rapid PR reviews last week as I was working on a product guide and a group hug. Uh, and then next we'll hear from Dan. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks to Scott for uh, last Tuesday, we had a detailed discussion about the MicroPython merge from MicroPython v1.19.1 into CircuitPython to catch up, and that was extremely helpful and um, sort of set me on a good path to uh, getting toward the end of the merge. And uh, thanks to Jeff, who this morning uh, diagnosed a bunch of problems in the draft PR that I submitted last night. I knew that it would break, but I wasn't sure what the fixes would be, and he had already fixed up a bunch of things by the time I got up. So thank you. And that's it. Great, thanks. Uh, next, I'll read for David Glau's text only. Uh, hug report to Tack, who's a tiny USB author for the great contribution to CircuitPython, ease of use, and now USB host things. Uh, to Vladimir Smitka for the PicoPad support in CircuitPython and educational content he is working on. And a group hug to the community and learn guide writer reviewer. I have been and am still learning a lot about software development, get usage automation. Thanks to you all. And then we'll hear from DJ Devin. I have a hug for Jepler for uh, uh, help with a syntax, uh, translating a syntax snippet um, about shifting and truncating binary and hex values. Uh, it was a really neat little snippet of code that just blew my mind. Um, and I'll echo uh, a big hug to Scott for his uh, deep dive this week. It was, it was an excellent deep dive. Thank you. And a group hug. That's it. Great. Thank you. And now we'll hear from Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Liz. Um, hug reports for me this week. Thanks to uh, Katni, who's been doing lots of great work organizing CircuitPython Day. Uh, hug report for Maker Melissa, who added some more new functionality in image load to support uh, even more types of RGB images, which is really cool, and a group hug for everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, and now we'll hear from Jepler, who I see is adding even more hugs. I am, you know, as people acknowledge things, I'm like, oh yeah, that's kind of important. And Same. so I just <laughs> want to echo their words. Um, yeah, so first up, Dan, thank you for the merge. I know um, it was a long time that you were working on it and I'm glad that it's reached this milestone of being uh, there for GitHub to chew on and tell us some of the remaining problems. Um, to Katni for a wonderful chat last Friday, just hanging out some friend time. Um, I'm really pleased to have made some friends within this community who are really dear to me. Um, Toddbot, thank you for sending me one of your PCB designs. It is a synth, naturally, and that's going to come later this week. I'm excited. Katni, thank you for organizing CircuitPython Day. And uh, David, thank you for backporting that board definition to CircuitPython 8. As you identified, that could be really helpful for folks who have the board, for instance. And uh, that's what I've got. I'll think of more, but uh, yeah, that's for now. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, and now we'll hear from Katni. Hello. So uh, back at you, Jeff, for a wonderful chat. Um, I have a hug report to Toddbot for a synth hardware care package with one thing that I was expecting and three surprises. So there was all sorts of fun going on there. Uh, to Paul Cutler for hosting a synth IO panel on CircuitPython Day. Um, this is a bunch of people hosting stuff on CircuitPython Day. To Maker Melissa for hosting a stream, uh, Foamy Guy for hosting a stream, to Jeff and Dan for joining me in a chat, to uh, John Park, Noah, and Pedro for hosting their weekly streams, and uh, to John Park for taking on doing the introduction, and to Scott for hosting a stream as well. And a group hug. Great. Thank you. Looking forward to all that CircuitPython Day content. Uh, and now I'll read for Kmatch, who is text only. 
uh, to Jepler for taking on the challenge of the ESP32 S3 dot clock displays. Can't see what's possible for these big touchscreen displays. And hugs to all. And now we'll hear from maker Melissa. Uh, let's see. Uh, I wanted to give a hug to uh, Jepler and Paint Your Dragon for laying the groundwork for the Matrix Portals 3 and Bitmap Tools. And a group hug to everyone else. Great. Thank you. And now I will read for Mark. A uh, hug report to Katni for the CircuitPython Day organization. Hope to attend some of it. And a group hug. And then we'll hear from Scott. Hello. Uh, first, a hug report to Microdev, who did a ton of work to do uh, an ESP IDF 5 update for CircuitPython. I, I'm dusting that off, and it's been awesome. It's a huge, a huge boost, so thanks to them. Uh, thank you to Katni, like other folks have said, for organizing CircuitPython Day on Friday. Hug to Dan, again, for the 119 merge PR. And lastly, also to David for some board backports. Great. Thank you. And mm -hmm. that was Hug Reports. Next up is Status Updates. Status Updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I will start, and we'll go through the list alphabetically. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide some tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If a discussion becomes too long for status updates, we can, we can move on to in the weeds. With that, I will get started. Uh, so I've been working on a few product guides, PC Joystick Seesaw Breakout, and the Arduino pages for the Metro RP2040. I had never actually used a PC Joystick before, so I had to procure one on eBay for testing, but luckily it worked really well, and I'm hoping I maybe will do a project with it. Uh, I've also been putting together some code with Synth.io for an upcoming project collab with Noi. We are redoing our MX MIDI guitar project to be a synth guitar. Uh, we're using the prop maker feather since it has the onboard I2S amp and the LIS 3DH accelerometer, which we'll use for some effects controls. And then we'll hear from Dan. Okay, so on Friday, uh, I released CircuitPython 8.2.3. This is just a bug fix release. The only changes were a proto matter update for RGB matrix if you're using like matrix portal M4. This release is helpful for certain RGB panels. It's not needed for matrix portal S3, the new board. And there was a also a fix because of some changes in the read the docs site. We had to change how we generate that documentation. Thanks to Jeff for that. Um, as I mentioned, I discussed the MicroPython merge with Scott, and we actually talked about backing out some of the changes that we made over the years in upstream, uh, mostly having to do with something called long-lived storage, uh, which is, was increasingly in conflict with stuff upstream. So uh, the result of that is that um, after working on it for several more days, I finished most of the merge, and it was at a point where uh, most of the builds worked, and so I submitted a draft PR and wrote it up. Uh, you can find that if you want in the PRs. And so there's a long discussion kind of a brain dump of what I went or worked on during the merge. Um, Jeff looked at this um, this morning and um, suggested a bunch of changes, and I incorporated those or equivalent changes, and a lot more things are working now. There's the things that are Currently, uh, the tests are still breaking, but we, I think we are confident we can figure that out. There are a very, very large number of file changes. A large number of them, of recent changes, just have to do with formatting. Uh, but there are also a bunch of really significant changes further back. And as I mentioned, um, we're going to see about taking out this long-lived storage thing, uh, which we've had for many years. It reduces fragmentation, which is especially needed on small boards like, say, Circuit Playground Express. And we want to see how badly um, taking turning this off, whether it breaks too many things on Circuit Playground Express. There are ways to put it back in that are less in conflict with the way um, storage management now works in MicroPython. So we'll look at that when and if the time comes. OK, that's it. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Uh, now I'll read for David Glau's text only. 
Uh, so CircuitPython, PicoPad, and GitWeek contacted Vladimir Smitka to see if he could do a backport PR for PicoPad support into the 8.2.x branch. Decided to do it myself and learn about Git Cherry Pick for backporting and the proper way to take PRs from one branch and apply it to another branch, keeping the original author credited. Checked the 20 to 25 latest boards in circuitpython.org downloads and found that together with PicoPad, the Metro ESP32 S3 was the only other board without a stable release download option. Uh, made a blind, I don't have the hardware test backport PR of Metro ESP32 S3 to 8.2.x branch so there, so that if there is an 8.2.4, it could contain both boards. Also found out that what I did the previous week for the DS10X20 and photo cell sensor was not needed since Vladimir has a lot of educational content in CircuitPython with code covering these sensors. And then in non CircuitPython, a Feather RP2040 USB host week. Tested the latest release and feature of J Fedor 2's uh, HID Remapper project. That is a really cool project. Uh, finally, I tested my IntelliKey membrane with Feather RP2040 USB host and firmware from, from TAC. Uh, found an uppercase, lowercase bug on one of the overlays and made a PR, now approved, without installing Arduino, but tested the result with the resulting artifact. And now we'll hear from DJ Devon. Thank you. Uh, this week I started working on a Matrix Portal S3 project with two Matrix panels, and I want to stack them vertically. Quickly found out that the included IDC cable isn't long enough to reach if you vertically stack them. Had to jump on DigiKey, try to find the right ribbon cable out of the tens of thousands of IDC ribbon cables. And I think I got the right one. I ordered 10 feet so I could just cut and splice into the existing connectors because they just kind of crimp on. And then Jepler just told me that I've been doing it wrong and there's actually a way to easily use the included IDC cable with uh, the way that I want to do it. You just have to invert the second row and that should work. I didn't realize that would work, um, but thank you very much, Jepler. I will definitely be working on that now. Uh, I'm working on a jewelry box birthday gift for my sister that incorporates a graph display of Fitbit heart rate data. The TFT will be mounted inside the lid and when opened will play a song and display the last 15 minutes of heart rate data on the display, TFT display. My sister will have a dedicated display to see my mom's heart rate data anytime she wants. All she has to do is input her Wi-Fi details into settings.toml and there you go. Nice birthday grid. Um, that's all I got. Cool. Uh, I've been enjoying seeing what you've been doing with the Fitbit stuff. Uh, next we'll hear from Foamy Guy. All right. Thanks, Liz. Uh, oop, I totally just messed up my stuff. There we go. Okay. Um, uh, over the past week or so, I knocked out a few more of the older uh, library PRs, and I've got another couple lined up to look at this week. Um, I Probably the thing I spent the most time over the last week was I uh, wrote some scripts to compare a full list of the PIDs that are uh, in the Adafruit store against all of the data that is inside the Oshawa database. Uh, to try to find the ones that are not in there yet. And then once I had that list of all the ones that are not in there yet, to go through it and find the ones that are kind of like quote unquote real that actually need to be submitted because uh, lots of them are like variations of different hardware that's already there or other third party stuff. So I've been working through that list and just wrapped it up actually before the meeting started. So that's uh, nice. And then. Uh, the other stuff that I got into over this past weekend on the stream is uh, I started prepping a little bit for the game that I'm going to make on stream on CircuitPython Day. So far, I've uh, built out a test map and started working on some helper classes that will get used inside of that game. Uh, and so I will be continuing on with mostly the same things this week. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. And thank you for working on all that Oshawa stuff and looking forward to your stream. Uh, next, we'll hear from Jepler. Hi again. So my main activity over the last week was to continue to work on the dot clock displays. Um, it's still not actually doing anything yet, but I'm getting really close. Uh, most of the register setting code is implemented. Most of the pin mixing code is implemented. The thing, the main thing that's left is code to do the actual DMA of the data to the display, which is always a big bugbear for me, but I'm getting close, I think. And like Dan discussed, I've been helping out with problems in the MicroPython merge. We solved several items together already this morning. Uh, sadly, I seem to be coming down with a cold. My spouse is like a day or 36 hours ahead of me. 
and it may be minor or it may knock me out uh, for part of the week. So we'll just see how it goes. Um, and yeah, that's what I'll be up to. All right. I hope you're able to rest up, Jeff. Uh, next, we'll hear from Katni. All right. So last week and earlier today, published the Metro RP2040 guide. Um, took care of some guide feedback on the uh, PropMaker Featherwing guide, which reported some code um, that wasn't working, among some other things, and um, also related a GitHub issue where someone was reporting the same thing. Um, also wrapped up a few other GitHub issues that I had been assigned that have been sitting around for, you know, years. Um, they're gone. And uh, so this week, um, Friday, I'll be on Paul's panel chat and then also chatting with Jeff and Dan, um, Jeff's cold willing, uh, as well as coordinating folks throughout the day and during the week. Um, I need to write up the CircuitPython day intro. It is going to be um, streamed by John Park, but I promise to write it up. So I have to do that. And then um, in between all of this, I will be writing the Metro ESP 32 S3 guide, which is in the shop coming soon. Um, so hopefully that guide, uh, I actually don't know the ETA and when it's supposed to be in, but the guide will be done within a week. Um, so within uh, this week, I guess. So if it goes into the shop sooner, you might have to wait, but it will be available very soon. That's what I've got. Cool. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll hear from maker Melissa. Hello, let's see. Um, last week I worked on, I uh, finished the alpha blend changes for the CircuitPython core board, and um, I submitted a PR for that. Uh, I added the uh, uh, bit field compression support uh, to the image load library, so you can now load uh, images created with GIF, or GIMP, I mean. Uh, I updated the Matrix Portal M4 and S3 simple test and factory reset images and put them in their respective guides. Um, worked on finalizing code for the uh, message board project, and I started a guide for the message board. Uh, this week I'm going to get the message board finalized and PR'd, and, or just get it PR'd, I guess. I'll work on the guide for the for the message board, and uh, I'll do my circuit Python live stream on Friday. And that's it. Cool. Looking forward to that project and your live stream. Thanks. And last, we will hear from Scott. Hello. Thanks, Liz. Um, I'm going to be kind of bug hunt hunting for USB host back and forth with TAC this week. He's out last week because he got sick. Um, I'm doing a demo uh, thanks to some code from Toddbot that is a USB host MIDI keyboard plus a synth IO. And I've got a little bit of an initialization code to write for the uh, 1060 EVK, but I'm kind of excited to get that working end to end. Um, and I'll be testing some fixes from TAC uh, through that. Um, and then on top of that, I'm also doing the ESP IDF5 merge. So I'm updating, uh, updating Microdev's PR. Um, and starting with that, and that's been super helpful, like I said. Uh, so we'll be updating the IDF5, and then I'll follow up once that is in with an, an update to 5.1. Uh, I have a, a PR out to the Black Magic project, which is a, a debugger sort of thing. Uh, and they gave me feedback, and I haven't got back to them on that, so I need to do that as well. Uh, Friday, I'll be streaming uh, for CircuitPython Day. Deep Dive starts a half hour later than normal. And then uh, next week, Monday through Wednesday, I'm out. So it'll be a short, super short week for me next week. Um, but having vacation with uh, family, so it'll be good. That'll be good. Great. Uh, looking forward to USB MIDI host and uh, enjoy your vacation. And that was status updates. Next up is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for long form discussions that either come out as status updates or the folks have identified ahead of time. If you have any in the weeds topics, please make sure they get added while we're discussing other things so we're not waiting around to see if anyone has topics. It looks like today there aren't any topics. Uh, so I think with that, we're going to wrap things up. This has been the CircuitPython Weekly for Monday, August 14th, 2023. Thank you to everyone who participated. 
If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. The meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafruit.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. We hope to see you all next week. Thank you, everyone.